Hi, everybody. Hi. Look a little. <laughs> Can you see it? Technical difficulties that we're having. I get that. That the the we got the audio part of it, but the camera that if trying to fine tune it. Uh huh. You'll get it. We we may just have to listen because I um when I'm doing stuff on the internet every now and then it pops up that the camera's on and I or it's off and I think it's off right now and I don't know how to get back on. Mm -hmm. I guess we fine too at least while it's still going at least. Yeah, Kyle probably can get it on. Uh, it's okay if you just listen to us too. Maybe turn it off. So Lisa can't join us tonight. She's um, they're doing Messiah practice tonight. And Becky's at her daughter Kelly's for about a week because her birthday's tomorrow. We have a card here um, when you can see it or if you can see it. And I'll be glad to put your names on it if you want me to. You can. I'm um, I've mail I'm mailing her one, but okay. Either way. I didn't get it in the mail in time, though. I've been have had the card out for two weeks, <laughs> and thinking, okay, you know, I'm going to mail it so it's close to her, her uh, birthday, and that's tomorrow. And I it should have been mailed Saturday, but it wasn't. <laughs> well, that's okay because she won't be back until for several days yet. So when did she leave? Did she, she left Friday. So she might meet, not be back till the end of the week. I don't know when Kelly will be able to bring her back. But she will get to be there for her birthday. So that'll be nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we could get going, man. You can keep working, and if you get it up, that'll be great. Okay. If Kyle, did you get my second um, code that I sent you just a little bit ago? I probably did. I'll have to. I'll pull that up later when. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, if you. If you don't have it, I could just give it to you or I can send it to your email. Yeah, and send it through the email, it'll be fine. It should All be right. there. Yep, I can do that. Because I had trouble getting it to work when I did the earlier one. Sending it.
Are you guys ready to start? From the code. You find the, did you get the code? I I didn't see it. I didn't solve the known subject and Okay, I just sent it by email, by text, I mean. I mean for through my hotmail account, I can be able to get it through easier that way than the, the phone. Yeah. You want me to send it to your hotmail email? Yeah. Okay. Can do that. And then we'll be ready to start. Okay. I will do that. Excuse me. Come on. Ready to go? Yep. All righty. Okay. Let's start out with a prayer. Father, here we are again asking for your help to understand your, your word and your ways all you've done for us in your son Jesus Christ uh, if it would please you send your spirit to clarify and give insight and stop mouths and focus minds pretty much Dependent on you for that, God. Please, God, do that. Please. We ask that in Jesus' name because we we bring nothing to the table. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> uh, you know, last week we spent some time and again in Acts 4. Got down to verse 32, yeah, but we uh, got one handout that we didn't go through. I see you got that out, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe we can go through that. Okay. 
you could bring yours. Get from last oh, time. No, I didn't. I didn't have it last time. Okay, from last time. I didn't Do you have, have any it. extra ones? I mean, I have this one, and I'm done with it. But I, well, I, I didn't. didn't have the one okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I'm sorry. We'll share. That's okay. Okay. So we're going to go through that uh, handout that at the top of the page says 14. <coughs> we were talking about uh, God's sovereignty and, and what that means and how some people like to limit that just by still claiming God is sovereign. Scripture does not support that view. A lot of it is uh, an attempt to smooth the sharp edges off of off of God, but uh, God can handle Himself. So we just should be content to let his words speak for him and uh, take it as that. There is a lot of, uh, of uh, teaching and talk probably predominant anymore that uh, God is uh, limits his sovereignty. That's that. It kind of came to a, a a logical conclusion with this uh, open theism movement, where uh, some pastors have uh, and theologians have come up with this uh, teaching that uh, God is. Uh, they they say he's sovereign, but he can't know what's going to happen because it hasn't happened yet. Thus, he's, it's open. The end is not known because it, it's open. And God is, is, well, I guess if you take, if you take it at face value, that God is pretty much like us. He's just kind of waiting to see what happens along for the ride. And, and, uh, that's a that's a, a a teaching that's going about and it's a, a well it's it's a it's a logical outflow of of uh the predominant theology in our day to day which is arminianism it's just the logical outflow mm. because uh, arminianism seeks to uh uh give uh man a, a, a say and what goes on and God can't do anything about it or God has limited his sovereignty or he's chosen not to exercise his sovereignty on, on, on people and let them uh, run amok and uh, that is a uh, has been the predominant understanding of of a, a large excuse me a large percentage of the church, and so the the next step is the, this open theism. Well, yeah, just take it to its logical end. That God just he doesn't uh, know what's going to happen around the corner, and, and uh, he doesn't. Uh, interfere he, he puts up by some boundaries but doesn't uh, directly interfere and anything bad happens it's it's uh does does the sole uh, agent of that act is the person who did it and we saw last week when we went through uh 20, verse 27 and 28, where it says, For truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both 
prepared and conscious pilot along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. We saw that that, uh, that piece of scripture just flies in the face of, of, this, of this teaching. That uh, uh, God is uh, <clears throat> not in control of of uh, our evil acts, and this uh, printout I I have here is a. Uh, uh, I think it's towards the end of a book. Uh, the name of the book is Beyond the Bounds. And uh, it's kind of a summary of the of the book. And I guess I'll just start out by reading it. <clears throat> it says, Open Theism's Denial of God's Good Purposes in Evil Events is unbiblical and undermines the hope it aims to preserve. Okay, there's the thesis. And then he goes on to uh, state a couple of, uh, of uh, positions. The first one here is from Gregory Boyd, and then the second one is from John Sanders. These are both uh, open theists. It says, open theists deny that one may say a good divine purpose lies behind all particular events. Pastorally, the way this plays out is as follows. And this is from uh, Gregory Boyd, I think his book, God at War. Okay, he says, within the limits set by God. Okay, so he has God setting up a limits of boundaries here. An individual may purpose to do things which are utterly utterly at odds with God's ultimate purpose. Thus, when an individual inflicts pain on another individual, I do not think you can go looking for the purpose of God in the event. I know Christ Christians frequently speak about the purpose of God in the midst of a tragedy caused by someone else. There was a young girl this year at Bethel, that's a college that he teaches that who was killed by a drunk driver and a lot of students were wondering what purpose God had in taking her home but this I regard to simply be a pious confused way of thinking the drunk driver alone is to blame for the girl's untimely death the only purpose of God in the whole thing is his design to allow morally responsible people the right to decide whether to drink responsibly or irresponsibly. And then he says, John Sanders puts it, puts, puts it this way. God does not have a specific divine purpose for each and every occurrence of evil. When a two-month-old child contracts a painful and curable bone cancer that means suffering and death, it is pointless evil. The Holocaust is pointless evil. The rape and dismemberment of a young girl is pointless evil. The accident that caused the death of my brother was a tragedy. God does not have a specific purpose in mind for these occurrences. Okay, now back to... Uh, the author. This view of reality contradicts many teachings in scripture and robs the wounded and grieving of biblical hope in the sovereign goodness of God, of whom Joseph said, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it, the evil for good. Genesis 50, 20. We've looked at that story before. Mm -hmm. How God governs all events in the universe without sinning and without removing responsibility from man and with compassionate outcomes is mysterious, but it's what the Bible teaches. God works all things together, all things according to the counsel of his will. Ephesians 1.11 All things includes 
rolling dice, Proverbs 16.33, falling sparrows, Matthew 10.29, failing sight, Exodus 4.11, financial loss, 1 Samuel 2.7, the decision of kings, Proverbs 21.1, the sickness, and I will say death, because uh, this is referring to a uh, uh, David's son of children, 2 Samuel 12, 15, the suffer, suffering and slaughter of saints, 1 Peter 4, 19, Psalms 44, 11, the completion of travel, James 4, 15, repentance, 2 Timothy 2, 25, faith, Philippians 1, 29, Holiness, Philippians 3, 12 to 13. Spiritual growth, Hebrews 6, 3. Life and death, 1 Samuel 2, 6. And the crucifixion of Christ. It's our text, Acts 4, 27 and 28. From the smallest thing to the greatest, good and evil, happy and sad, pagan and Christian, pain and pleasure, God governs all for his wise, just, and good purposes. Isaiah 46, 10. Lest we miss the point, the Bible speaks more, most clearly to this in the most painful situations. Amos asks, does disaster come to a city unless the Lord has done it? Amos 3, 6. After losing his ten children, Job says, The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job 1.21 And an interesting thing about that in Job, where he, after he says that, Uh, 121. Let's see. He quoted Job 1. Yeah, he quoted Job 121, where he, the, after Job lost his uh, uh, all his cattle, his his sheep, and his ten children all killed, he said the Lord gave. And the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then the next verse, because that's that's a, a pretty jarring statement. And you could say, well, Job, because there's a lot of bad theology in Job. His three three buddies throw out a lot of bad theology. But the the author of Job puts in here in verse 22, right after Job says that. So there's no doubt that this is not bad theology. He says in verse 22, and all this Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. So he clarifies that. And he clarifies it again when Job says right across the page in chapter 2, verse 10, Job says to his wife, shall we receive good from God and shall we not receive evil? And then it says again, in all this, Job did not sin with his lips. So, uh, okay, back to our handout. Uh, do, 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 do. Covering last sentence, so we're getting the last sentence. Covered with boils, he says, this is Job. Shall we receive good from God and not receive evil? That's what I just read here. And then after that, it says in all this, Job did not sin. True, Satan is real and active and involved in this world of woe. In fact, Job 2, 7 says, Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with loathsome, lo loathsome sores from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Satan struck him. But Job did not get comfort by looking at secondary causes. He said Satan's is a secondary cause. He gets comfort by looking at the ultimate cause and says, shall we accept adversity from God? 
the author of the book agrees when he says that Job's brothers and sisters showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. That's in Job, that's the end of the book, Job 42, 11. James underlines God's purpose, purposeful goodness in Job's misery. misery. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job and have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful, James 5, 11. Job himself concludes in prayer, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted, Job 42, 2. Yes, Satan is real and he is terrible and he is on a leash. Therefore, denying that a good divine purpose lies behind all particular events is false. More than that, it undercuts the very hope it wants to create. If we deny that God could have used a million prior events to save that college student, what hope then do we have that God will use all the hard things of life to bless the surviving surviving loved ones spiritually or physically in the hour of trial. The Bible teaches that God could have restrained the evil that killed that college student. Genesis 20, verse 6. The Lord, I think that's the instance of Abimelech where Abraham, uh, Abimelech uh, is a uh, the king of, I don't know, some country that Abraham ran off to and he uh, uh, said that it, Sarah was not his wife. He was She was his sister. Abimelech took her and God kept Abimelech from doing anything to Sarah, Abraham's wife. He, and that's recorded in, in that area in Genesis. Mm -hmm. So God could have restrained the evil that killed the college student because he has, does restrain evil. He restrained Abimelech. The, and then, then it says in verse in Psalm 33, 10, the Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. So he could nullify the impulse to swerve a car, but it was not in his plan to do it. Let us beware. If we spare God the burden of his sovereignty, we lose our only hope. Yeah. Let God bear that burden of his sovereignty. The price uh, when we uh, try to relieve that burden is, is too high and it's not biblical. All of us are sinners. We deserve to perish. Every breath is an undeserved gift. We have one great hope. Jesus Christ died to obtain pardon and righteousness for us. Ephesians 1, 7, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. And God will employ his all-conquering sovereign grace to preserve us for our inheritance through life and death. Jeremiah 32, 40. We surrender this hope if we sacrifice this sovereignty. Yeah. Jeremiah 32, 40, I like that. <laughs> the wrong way. This is God speaking. I will make with them an everlasting covenant that I will not turn away from doing good to them. And I will put the fear of me in their hearts that they will, may not turn from me. I will rejoice in doing them good. And I will plant them in this land in faithfulness with all my heart and all my soul.
God will employ his all-conquering sovereign grace to preserve us for our inheritance through life and death because he rejoices in doing us good, eternal good. And if we sacrifice uh, his sovereignty, then we don't have that hope because if God doesn't control everything that happens in our lives, then it's, uh, there's no guarantee that uh, he will, uh, we will preserve, we will uh, remain faithful and, and uh, that we will uh, have any uh, hope at all of all at, at uh, enjoying him in eternity because he uh, we're at the whims of situations and, and evil people and Satan all around us. Yeah, you know, one thing that I've always thought about too is is uh, if uh, like these open theist theologians like to say that that God has limited His sovereignty so He doesn't interfere with our uh, evil desires, but boxes them in. Well, what what is heaven going to be like? What if I when we get to heaven, I, I, Satan tempts me, and I have an evil inclination. And what is is God gonna? What what's gonna happen? There is is he is 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 he still uh, going to with withhold any uh, anything and let me run wild and and sin in heaven? I that this is so bizarre. And if, you know, if, if the greatest uh, uh, I guess the argument a lot of times goes that, that if uh, the only way that uh, that we can uh, love God with any meaning is if we can choose not to that that's usually the 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 how the argument goes like well he uh, they call it coerced, coerced love if god if, if 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 god works in such a way that he coerces our love then that's not love and Again, I take that well, if, if if that's the way he acts now, then and if that's the greatest uh, manifestation of love is the ability not to love left up to the individual, then what what about the afterlife? Is that going to be is that carried through or do we lose our our ability to love in heaven because we can't not love? Have we lost that? Do we lose that in heaven? They need, to, that they, they need to answer these questions. So we're we're freer now than we are when we when we get to heaven, and we can't love when we get to heaven. I yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, but uh, you carry it through to the logical end and. And I think that's a good way to uh, drive that that conversation, because people will just come out with, "Well, everybody knows that you can't that if you force love, that's like well, well one. I don't remember if it was Boyd or Sanders calls. I think it was Gregory Boyd called that divine rape. Hmm. 
you can't that's no that's not love okay but then in heaven when we will love god or or maybe we won't and if he says well well we will then okay so is that rape in heaven then we're not free not to love him just what i don't know how you'd answer that mm -hmm. i don't really don't know and but <clears throat> i think we've gone through this enough that we know how god uh, works and in, in a key word there is in his people he works not from the outside to coerce us Twist your arm behind your back and say, "Well, you, you're going to love me." Mm -hmm. He he works from the inside and gives us a new nature and a new heart, like the Bible says. And our new nature, we we love. We love God. That's the Holy Spirit's work within us, and it's not coercion. I, mean, I don't feel coerced. I don't think any of you do either. So the Bible has an answer for that. And it's, it's, it's that God is, through his Holy Spirit, is working that in us. That's him in there causing us to do that. But if you don't have that view, and your view is that uh, hum humans are autonomous beings that, that uh, can operate outside the sphere of God's influence or outside the sphere of God's control, they can only be influenced by God through the outside, then yeah, then you're 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 stuck with that. And think it through to the logical conclusion and see where that gets you. Because it doesn't end in a good place. Mm -hmm. But that that is the predominant view in uh, in Christianity today, no doubt. But also, no doubt that a lot of Christians are are pretty pretty shallow thinkers. And so, if we uh, if you have the opportunity to uh, speak with one that wants to talk about it other than just throw it out there as a presupposition like everybody knows this this way and, and yeah but if you and the way to dig into that is to ask questions mm -hmm. it's not to be a, a argumentative or state positions it's to ask questions and get the the other person to answer like well okay if like i said earlier if 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 the greatest uh, good is for god to limit his his uh, sovereignty so we can freely accept him or reject him if that that's the greatest manifestation of love then or is he loving when we're in heaven how does that work? I don't understand. Explain, please. Mm -hmm. Ask questions. Okay. Okay, we're going to leave off. No, there, the I can hardly paragraph it towards the bottom of page two. I can hardly overstate the pastoral dismay I feel over Boyd's sentence. Thus, when an individual inflicts pain on another individual, I do not think we can go looking for the purpose of God in the event or Sanders' insistence that there is pointless evil. As far as I can see, it flies in the face of God's hard and merciful comfort in Hebrews 12, 3 to 11. The teaching of this passage is that the persecutions that Christians are receiving as they follow the example of Jesus' own endurance is the discipline of a loving father with the purpose of producing in us 
and those around us more holiness. So it seems that individuals are inflicting pains on others, to use Boyd's sentence, and that this is interpreted by the writer of Hebrews as the discipline of God who has a clear purpose in it. Therefore, the writer does look for the purpose of God in the pain inflicted by others on Christians. And then he goes on and uh, quotes that Hebrews 12. Mm -hmm. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be, we nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he, he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. So I, we, we spoke about, spoke about the, the forced love of God, but then, then we here we have to uh, look at God's, uh, that, that's the other thing, basic to how they limit God's sovereignty is, is he, uh, he can't do anything to restrain uh, people from doing evil. Because that would uh, interfere with their their uh, free will, and they would no longer be culpable. But uh, when we read texts like this one in Hebrews, where it seems to be pointing to uh, uh, pain inflicted uh, on others or by others on Christians and sees that as the discipline of the Lord uh, for those Christians like Lord God is using the uh, evil intentions of the ones that are uh, inflicting pain he's using it for his purpose it says the it is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. That that goes back to that uh, Genesis chapter 50 text where Joseph says to his brothers, as for you, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. There's a dual, dual purpose here. One is the evil intentions of the people that are uh, uh, committing the inflicting pain on God's people and the other is God's intention that through that infliction of pain God is is sanctifying his his people and the people that that are inflicting the pain are guilty because that's their end is to inflict pain on someone they hate so they are guilty for that but underneath that is God's purpose that they are unaware of. And so they are, they are guilty. They are not uh, relieved of their guilt because God has a different purpose for their actions. What follows in the text is the description of the purpose that God has in our being treated so painfully by others, verses 10b to 11. This is still in Hebrews. God disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So here are two kinds of biblical situations that contradict Boyd's claim that when an individual inflicts pain on another individual, we sh should not go looking for the purpose of God in the event. The suffering inflicted by Jesus on Jesus by others, uh, Hebrews 12, 3 and Acts 4, 27, 28, and the suffering inflicted on Christians by others, 
Hebrews 12, 4 to 11, in both cases, the teachings of scripture is that God did indeed have a purpose in the very acts of inflicting pain. The salvation of his people in the one case through Jesus' suffering and the sanctifying of them in the other through our suffering. Okay, the suffering saints bear witness to the preciousness, preciousness of God's all-knowing sovereign care. <clears throat> I realize that this is not proof of truth, but since open theists use stories to intensify their claims, it may be good to balance the accounts. I offer only one from 22 years of pastoral experience with suffering saints. This is from a letter I received during one of the debates about open theism in our denomination. Reference had been made by an open theist to a tragic situation in which a young woman's husband had abandoned her and shattered her dreams of going with him on the mission field. She asked why God would permit her to marry a man who would abandon her. She was counseled by the open theist that God did not know the man would do this. This was meant to help her keep trusting God. A young woman in our church heard that and wrote to me, astonished at such counsel. Her situation was worse. I will not share the details, but only say that she too and her children were forsaken. She said, if God does not know everything the future holds, how is he any different from any other friend on whose shoulder I might cry? He may be good and loving and righteous, but he, if he is not in control of what happens to me tomorrow, how can I have any confidence that he can work all things together for my good? The confidence that God knows what he is doing has gotten me through the last five years. I believe that God knew from the beginning what blank would do, that he cannot be surprised by anything. And because I believe that, I can believe that God intends this whole thing for my good. It's not just that everything will turn out all right in the end. It's that right now he is working his purpose out in my life to move me to the next degree of glory. If that working includes suffering, how much better it is to know that it is purposed by a loving, all-powerful God who gives unto each who gives unto each day what he deems best. In conclusion, I say again, as a pastor who longs to be biblical and God-centered and Christ-exalting and eternally helpful to my people, I see open theism as theologically ruinous, dishonoring to God, belittling to Christ, and pastorally hurtful. My prayer is that Christian leaders will come to see it this way, and thus love the church by counting open theism beyond the bounds of orthodox Christian teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought that was pretty concise. any questions, thoughts, insight? No, but I'd have to read it again closely. Yes, my question. Is, is what author, it's, what his name is? Piper, yeah? Is Piper. 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 Yeah. Yes, John Piper. Yes, he start to talk about uh, different, different posts, different, uh, different bad situation. 
yes, like a child uh, suffering from cancer, yes. But he finished his very easy way. He didn't answer on this question, what purpose of God child has cancer. He's uh, finished very easy. Women are born in, uh, uh, have family problem. It's like, it's very easy. It's very different. Woman, wife, who has a family problem, you know, problem with her husband, and mm -hmm. maybe suffering a lot, a lot of, but she's still alive. And she has still, you cannot, it's very different, different course. It's a very different, different child who's uh, have been no, uh, killed mm -hmm. or a child who has been a uh, child girl or child like two years old has cancer it's awful suffering i'm doctor and no uh, it's awful suffering mm -hmm. for parents but awful suffering for child yeah child will be what what purpose for god suffering of child no about parents we understand mm -hmm. parents my parents but suffering for child. He can feed, uh, he's a uh, uh, very easy way. Like a uh, woman said, I understand now uh, it's uh, God uh, uh, make for me better. Yes, maybe he improved her behavior. Maybe she's, she's uh, yes, start to uh, thinking about church children. I don't know her situation. Different, different, different. But he didn't answer about very bad situation, like suffering of child for Mm -hmm. nothing two years two years old five years old they understand very nice five years we're going to die mm -hmm. like 80 years like i am 73 i understand i will die and i will go to i i hope i will go to god my soul will be with god and i will be in heaven i understand like i'm ready for this but five years old he cannot understand why he going to die mm -hmm. What purpose of that? Yes. Well, we don't know what purpose it is all the time, but we do know. But we can be sure when we read scriptures that he does have a purpose. Now you can we can speculate. the uh, The example that comes to my mind is the one that was used in here was uh, 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 David's baby with Bathsheba. That. Uh, God made him sick. The baby wasn't, and this was a baby. This was an and and killed him. Yes, God and, uh, did. God did that. Yes, we're back and we you said about what, what is David. the purpose of that? We are talking again about not about baby. What suffering the baby? We are talking about David. David was suffering after uh, child was uh, uh, dead. Uh, next day, David, or that day, I don't remember, changed his clothes and start. I will come, he, he cannot come to me, I will come to him. Yes, That's right. we're talking about David, but we're not talking about child. Same like Job. Job, he lost his 10 children. Right. We're talking about, again, about Job, but we're not talking about 10 children. But David's situation did talk about the child. No, about yes. David. The next, you said it yourself. The next day, he changed his clothes and he combed his hair and he was done mourning. And he says, I know. What did he say? What did you just said it? I know that I will go and be with him. Yes. So the purpose of God in taking that child, of, he had probably several purposes, but for the child, that's what you're concerned with. Yes. That child is with God in, in glory. David knew that, that that child is in with God in glory. Now, what did God, uh, what was the God's purpose in taking that child to glory at uh, two weeks of age? I don't know, because he didn't live, but maybe if he did, maybe he would have had some suffering incurable disease maybe he would have been evil beyond uh, belief maybe he would have uh, who knows name your name your misery there's no shortage of misery to be escaped from this world there's isn't there just it's unlimited the amount of evil 
that, that, that we can escape by dying at two weeks of age. Maybe that was it. Because David says, I know I'm going to go see him. He knew that God took him. He, he didn't get mad at God for taking him. He knew he took him and he knew he took him to heaven and he was going to see him again. It was just a matter of time, just a little delay. And so when we have a, a like this baby, you talk about that five-year-old in here with bone cancer, that, that, that would be a horrible suffering. For child. For, child. I'm, for anybody. Pediatrician, no. Oh, I'm no. pediatrician and I work 35 years with this kind of child. Parents, yes, by suffering. But suffering of child. Oh, they just don't understand it. We cannot, it's, it's very different. It's awful because you have hope. I have hope. I will see God. Yes, mm -hmm. child does have this hope. He cannot understand. He cannot understand. No. But when God finally takes him, he will understand and it'll be right. God will make whatever, whatever that pain and suffering that child endured in his and the confusion of his little mind, God will make that right. He will make it, make that up for him and then some. And we, I have confidence in that. Now, if you take the other path and say, well, God, he, he, it just happened and God couldn't do anything about it. Then you're going down this road that things happen that are outside of God's control. If, if that's the road you go down, better think it through because it. Well, then you, then you would say, well, then that child probably isn't with God. It was pointless. Yeah, it was, well, it was point pointless, but. And we but don't we don't know whether he was with, he's with God or not. I, yeah, you know, that, yeah, that could be. I don't know. That's part of it. It's just yeah, that's be be part of it. But the other part is, is well, what's around the corner for Anything. his brother, his little sister? What's what's around the corner for them? And and, and if we don't know, and God, not, God, things are out of control. God doesn't know either. And that's that's a. Yeah, I, I just, I couldn't imagine a world like that that was just spinning out of control with, with pointless evil, with no uh, 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 outside of any plan and just random. That would be, that, that's pretty disconcerting. That, that's... Uh, then there's no hope. Then that takes away the hope. Pretty much, pretty much. That's what he was talking about, that yeah. the hope is not there, yeah. if you think that way. But we don't have to think that because the Bible doesn't teach that. And I go back to David, that David, that he, he, he cleaned himself up and says, well, God did it. And I know I'm going to see. Him. I know, I know God will make it right, make it up to that little fella. The suffering he went through because of me, because of my sin. So in, in the theology of the Bible, I think one thing that Luba's thinking about and I think many of us have thought about too is that it really never says that I'm thinking of biblically that a child under the age of understanding is enveloped in God's care and will go to him. Well, we're responsible for the light we have. Mm -hmm. And if we cannot understand the light that's out. The call's about to end. The call. Said one time about child. Take child for my name. What's uh, look? I don't remember this because we uh, say go from a uh, di disciple said go you uh, go away. Go away, go away. You, yes, uh -huh. and uh, Christ said if you take a child for my name, like take child, pay attention to child. All Bible. Okay.
Ryskin on the Oath. Not very nice about chat. Von reading, I'm reading. Killed, 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 killed. All chat, child, God said, children will be killed like this. That's that's no different today, Luba. It's not the whole Bible. It's the whole human history up to today. We we do not value children. Yes. No, we don't. Uh, no. no. No, we don't. At all. So it, it's, and who is Jesus? Jesus is God, God incarnate. Yes. So God's heart is that he loves children. Children have a special place in Jesus' life. He loves children. And he, uh, so, so if, if we take that bit of information, then when uh, a child dies, then if Jesus loves little children, then we know that it is whatever suffering that little child had to endure on his four or five years on this earth is will be repaid to him thousands of times over for eternity because jesus loves him and he loved the little children from genesis all the way through to now it's a the jesus god is the same he has not yes, changed. He, does not change. he loved little children. He loved the little children that, that he killed in the flood. Yes. How many thousands of little children died in the flood of Noah that God brought about? Thousands. Millions. Probably. Right. I don't know. Yeah. The, all yeah. of them. All of them. Except for they all died. Yeah. And we can take a glimpse of of the good that came out of that from that flood story because those people on earth at that time were evil, just absolute evil. They had no, every thought and intention of their mind was nothing but evil. And killed their children. Well, what were those children going to grow up and be? Yeah, right, same. They're going to grow up and be the same. And so, that was a great mercy for God to take those millions of kids out of that situation and bring them into the realm of Jesus's love. Yeah, this is this is what she was thinking of, and this is in Matthew. It's probably other places too. But let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. Right. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Well, we don't have answers to that question because I I think the answers are are just about as varied as God Himself. He just has all sorts of of reasons and and. Uh, for why he, he does things the way he does. But he's revealed his, his self to us in his son, Jesus Christ. And so we know that God loves children. We know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. And so I, the only thing I can conclude from God allowing the suffering of children is that it's There's gonna be better. Yeah. It's better. It's best. It's best. And I can't answer why it's best in each situation. But I know God as He's revealed Himself to be sovereign and loving. Mm -hmm. Is it this this so much that we don't understand and we can't understand and we that goes against our human <coughs> nature to want to be in control and want to know what's going on. Well, it goes. In. Yeah. But see, we're we're living in time now, and we only see these seventy or eighty years, mm -hmm. and so 
when you go out of that and, and if you can think of 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 it in terms of eternity and God's purpose coupled with his goodness, then yeah, it's no, we can't understand each situation, but we we can understand an overarching theme. And that theme is God is absolutely sovereign and God is absolutely loving. and we can rest in that now that doesn't mean that we don't weep that we don't mourn cry just scream at the suffering of little children that does that does not mean that at all we we, we should you i mean we would be heartless monsters not to But we also know that our God is reigns and he's nothing is out of his control. And if we are his, and my belief is all little children are his, then it's for our good. It's for our good. And for their good. Yeah. Yeah. I was including that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, any other uh, scheme that we come up with, like these open theists or people that say God is not in control of something like that? They have to uh, uh, answer answer that and uh, for themselves. I, I don't know how they how they can uh, say there's pointless evil and because they just you just take that to its logical conclusion and then. If the, because if there is pointless evil, if there is uh, things that just happen, then nothing can be certain. We can be certain of nothing. Uh, some idiot might poke a button tonight, blow the world up. And if if your if your view is well, God couldn't do anything about it, then that will take God by surprise. He said, well, I'm not ready for him yet. And what about the, the uh, children of God who haven't been born yet? What if uh, the world would have ended some megalomaniac would have blew up the world 80 years ago? None of us would be with Jesus. We wouldn't have, because we weren't born. So, God is in control. And, uh, Jesus says, uh, put that right before he says and then the end will come
Hebrews 12, 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. No, what I'm thinking of is Matthew, Matthew 24, 24, 14. Matthew 24, where Jesus is talking about the end times. If Jesus is, is talking specifically about the end times, then it's not out of control. Because he says in verse 9, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Okay, now Jesus is saying this is going to happen, that they, the evil people, will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. Okay, so if Jesus is saying this is going to happen and it hasn't, then he must know it's going to happen because he's going to make it happen. That's what scripture says. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray, and because of lawlessness will, will and because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold, but the one who do, endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Well, we're going to live long, long time because it's going to be very, 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 very far. Because if we're going to preach for all what? All nations. All no, nations. we're close. That could. For all nations? Uh, yeah, it was about. Uh, oh, I was just reading about this. In. Uh, the early 1900s, there were, when it says all nations, that means we take that to mean all people's people, I groups. Mean all people yes. groups, all people groups, not every, not every individual person. I think I, I'm thinking like for Asian people, for different, different people, right? Yes. People groups, like yes. all Asians, yes. Muslim but, people, yes. but in India, how many people groups are in India? There's thousands of them. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that, that's not just all Indians. It's all people group. But in the 20th century, all those people groups were got really whittled down that the, 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 the gospel was proclaimed in a, thousands of them. And it got down to, uh, gosh, I can't remember, but it was about 20 years ago, this book was written, I was reading, and it was declared in that book that in, in the lifetime of that author, we could complete that. All nations. There were, there was, all people groups. yeah, all people groups. There was uh, a, maybe a thousand or 1500 left that hadn't been reached and that's doable. That's doable. How about Muslim people? Muslim people is grow. Muslim religions grow, 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 grow. Okay. Yeah. But there are people groups. Now the Rus now the Russian people that I know that about Russian. Russian Christian, they Christian. But they Russia really people are a people group. They 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 have a commonality. They speak Russian. They have a Russian culture. Yeah. That's one people group that comprises okay. yes. millions of people. Yes, we take different different Asian country. Asian. How many groups? Libya, Palestine, different Muslim people. They grow up. They grow up. You mean they grow up? You mean from little babies to big no, people? No, I need about mean? religion. You mean the no the people groups. There. I mean, they spread their yes. religion yes. to other people. And we, uh, when we're not going to read and allow uh, gospel of kingdom uh, proclaim, how we can proclaim go gospel of kingdom for Asian people, for Muslim people? Well, they, they missionaries. Are. 
They are. Yes, but you cannot do it in like Syria, Lebanon. They're Brazil. doing it now. Yeah, they are. They do. That's what the voice oh, is. They send them over. The They're voice. underground. Go, on, go, go, go. And read. No, no. It, it, that's I have been. It's no. Voice of the Martyrs is all about that. No, no. It's we close one our eyes. It's uh, it's going to low. Yes, it's maybe so, yes because it goes. Uh, Bible said it's it's happened, but maybe million years ahead. Mm. Yes, because Christian. Okay, when is uh, Jesus have you know we have time? He start to uh, Christian start to be uh, Apostle Pavel. Apostle Paul went for Syria, different, different, different around. Yeah. around. How many of these countries left to be Christian? Not too many. They start to be. Uh, but he planted the churches in those people groups. Yes. And churches. And what did Paul say uh, to when his letter to, and uh, uh, I think it's uh, Romans chapter 15, at the end of his, of his work, he says, I hope to come to you on my way to Spain because I have no more work to do in Asia. He had completed all his evangelism efforts to the people groups in Asia. He was done. And now he is going to Spain into Europe as an old man to keep to for frontier missions. Because, yes. Yeah. But he had been in a lot of countries start to be no Christian as after after him I start to be Muslim well so, they there may be a predominance of Muslims but, but it doesn't say it doesn't say in here that that every nation will be made a Christian nation that's not what Jesus said proclaim of who's, the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed yes that it, doesn't mean that everybody in that People group is going to become a Christian. No, but if you're going to proclaim, but they're if, going to hear it. Yes, if you like. Not to every hear. person, but it'll be there. Yes, it, if you like to hear. If they don't like to hear, they go not going to hear. Then they're going to hell. Guilty. Yes, yes, I agree. But I said only about what I my mind, what I said. So, uh, to reach, proclaim every group. Okay, but it's not every. What we did say? It's Bible case. Okay, Reclaim glorious kingdom will be proclaimed through the whole world. What is the money to, to all nations? Mm -hmm. No group, to all nations. Yeah, but the nations are we take to be people groups. No, nations. Yeah. Na uh, no. You got to divide it more the, 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 because there's a lot more people groups than there are nations. Uh, uh, nations is, uh, yes, nations is language, culture. Or if a group is yeah. a group, it's nation. Land, have all same. Language, Language and culture. Same culture. That's a people group. Yes, people mm -hmm. group. Yeah. So it's nation. So <laughs> I said, no, it might my, be in different countries. Yes. In, in one country, there might be a lot but of to reach, people groups. To reach people, right. yeah. group people, like right. nation, group people, to reach, it's, it will take long, 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 long time ahead. Well, we've been working on it for quite that a while. Was, and we, 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 Nobody going to listen to you at We've home. been to thousands and thousands of people groups in the last hundred years. And they've, it, it's and doable. They've, we they've, can get it uh, done. They've so. translated the Bible into yeah. all those languages. Yes, in Africa. Mm -hmm. Some country in Africa. Uh, yes. Some country, some people in uh, um, India. India, yes. But look, Asian people like around around um, Israel. Only Muslim. Israel one, uh, and uh, they think he's a Christian, but they understand the, the read. Uh, but the gospel has been proclaimed in Syria. It has been proclaimed in Egypt. He's it been has in been Syria, proclaimed. He's been in uh, Paul. Paul. Where he's have been Paul? He's been in Syria. To say, I forget this number. I read about this when Paul, 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 Paul. So I said, so I said, uh, what will be exist long, long, long time because it's long time to uh, the, the new countries. If you get a picture, there's no, a one with the, with the Israel, Jesus, where the most unreached people Apostle, are, is, uh, they Jesus. call that 1040 window, mm -hmm. yeah.
So, and I think them. most of them are actually in India. They may be. And the the Wycliffe Bible translators, Syria. what they're finding the, the out. Gerbin, Apostle Gerbin in Syria. Yeah. The Gerbin in Syria. Mm-hmm. Paul Ministry. Paul Ministry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Paul Ministry. Так, Syria. Mm-hmm. Just Syria. in Syria. Yes, when the Kyprus is like this. Uh, and in, those places are now the countries that are is, predominantly Muslim, but that does yes. not mean they're still not proclaiming Christ in those how countries. How many? How many percent? We can find quickly on the Google. It doesn't yes. say how many. It just says they will be proclaimed. On Google, we got right. How many people like to hear gospel? What, not what? very many. No many. Yeah. So. If you can go to proclaim somebody coming down, like coming down mm-hmm. about gospel, like Muslim people or different different mm-hmm. uh, religion, I will not go and listen. I will go out and done. Mm-hmm. I don't like listen to you because you uh, so you But say, God, Jesus doesn't say that we're we're to make them understand and believe. It just Jesus says you are to proclaim it. Like principle said, behave because. Nice. We don't make people believe. That's God's work. That's the Holy Spirit's work. And if but there are as, people in those countries that God wants to be Christian, he will see that they hear the word. Yeah, and we got to go do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then and then the end will come. And if we can't, then we can We're going to the one time, I guess. Support the <laughs> Well, we don't well, know. That, that we we we're, don't we know. See. We're closer than we we're a lot closer than we were a hundred years ago. That's true. By a degree a of multitudes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's good that you brought that up, though, because it's and it's, there's a lot of people working on that project as we speak, and they're grossly underfunded. And we they can they can use our support, and and that's one way we can do it. Is the voice of the martyrs is is yeah. a very good way to do that. If you don't know much about it, Mm-mm. I can bring you. I'll show you some books. Mm-hmm. And I'll, okay, I'll bring you some things. I and I don't it. know if that they support Wycliffe, but uh, the Wycliffe is good too. Absolutely, yeah. Because they because they're, they're, they're tra- the they they translate the Bible. The, the Bible into all these languages. Yes. And then they, they I, I tell you how deep they get, Lou, but in India, mm-hmm. they, they translate the Bible into some not, not odd not. language that it was a written language and they translated it and they, they got a Bible to this people group. There was like 20 of them in this people group. And but then they found out that down the road, there was another people group that had the same language that they thought were included but they weren't because they didn't have a written language and some of their, their accents were just a, enough difference that they couldn't understand it and they couldn't read it because they didn't have any written language. It was all oral. And so the Wycliffe Bible translators go in there and, and make a written language for these people that, that don't have one. They create it. It's a, is isn't that great and teach them how to read it and then then they can read the scripture bring them the bible in in their new written language that's the degree that these people go to to proclaim the gospel throughout the whole world and they they're doing that today they're working that and this and they're finding these new people groups. And like you said, they're just all over. Yeah, they know that. They're aware of that. And when they find one, they dig in their heels and get to work. So they, it's, and proclaim the gospel. And if it, if it entails creating a written word and teaching these people how to read, they do that. That's amazing. It is, it's absolutely amazing what the Holy Spirit can do through people that trust in him. It is. And, and, and we, yeah, it's a big job. Yeah, it's a big job, but we need to uh, 
get off of our wallets and support it because it takes a lot to get yeah. that done. And I don't, I don't have any skills to do that. I'm too, I'm too old and I have no skills in that area. There's people that do. Mm -hmm. And we need to uh, support them in any, in any, any way we can. The most important way we can support people like that is, is get a name, find out who they are and pray for them. Pray for them because this isn't getting done by human ingenuity and, and human resources. This is getting done by the Holy Spirit. And we need to pray for those, those uh, people out there doing that work. And then if, if we have their, their extra resources and they, and they need them, so send it, send it. That's because, uh, yeah, this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Then there won't be any more suffering children. There won't be any more bone cancer. The end will come, and then then we'll then we'll know the purpose God had in all the evil that He befell to His people. It's a uh, but until that time, we work towards that end and we trust an all loving and an all knowing and an all powerful God. I didn't plug this in, <laughs> but it's good. Uh, questions? What did What's the name of the people that go and translate, learn the language and teach them to read? What's the name of the group, the people that do that? Wick, well, it's Wycliffe or Wycliffe. I don't know how to exactly pronounce it, but that's one. And there are some other groups too, but that's one of the major ones. I don't know. Is that Voice of the Martyrs kind of a clearinghouse for that or? Um, I don't know if they're related or connected with Wycliffe or not? No, are they a clearinghouse for different missionary yes, groups? Yes, I, th I thought they were. Absolutely, okay. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that would probably be a good place to poke around in is uh, Voice of the Martyrs. I'll see that you all uh, have some information about that. We have it at our store. We give, we, you can buy a book for a penny and it tells all about how they got started and all of the people that are risking their lives to spread the gospel. And some have lost their lives and some have been in prison and some have, their houses have been burned and many other things. Yeah. They've been captured. They've been, yeah, it's just, but they are making the gospel heard and new Christians are, it's just exploding. The, the people that are becoming Christians. It's, it's very holy. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a good place to end tonight. We didn't get into our text, but that's okay because the text we're coming into in Acts is uh, is pretty important, I think. And I wanted to, uh, I'd like for all of us to be here. It's got some uh, deep insights into it, in it. So then next week, God willing, we'll, uh, we'll be in uh, chapter 4, 32 through uh, 5, 11. So if you get, get a chance, uh, read through that section and, and uh, 
faint pray read it again pray think <laughs> write and and let's 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 uh, uh see what we can dig here i i i've always kind of ignored this little section here in acts and and uh but boy i i've been digging into it this last week and man it just kind of seems to me to pretty deep well so good we'll get into that next, so week. next sunday is the third of december okay and we'll still and have luba, luba here luba will still be here you can't <laughs> leave before yes next sunday. <laughs> yes i right now i'm Singapore, China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Indonesia, and Malaysia, fastest growing Christian community now. Because missionary. 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 Uh-huh. But, <laughs> but Western Europe, North America, and Oceania. What, uh, Oceania. Oh, uh, my translation. Canada. Oceania. 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 So, how come? But, even if the Christians in those countries have declined, that doesn't mean that oh. Christ hasn't been proclaimed. Yeah, he's yes, been it proclaimed. was proclaimed, but yeah. they decide different religions usually. Yes, that's well, so that's they the world. They has got different God. The world they has the world has taken over. Yep. <laughs> yes, thank you. It was very interesting about proclaimed because I did pay attention a lot of But things. we got to remember what Jesus says. I have other sheep that are not of this fold, and I must bring them in. He will bring in his sheep. He mu- I must. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he yeah. will bring his sheep in. He will get to them by the but Holy Spirit. We know He's, he, he won't lose any of them. Okay, thank you. It's very interesting. If they say, if they have people claim they're Christians, and then they abandon it and... and start worshiping Allah and turn into Muslims. They were never Christians to begin with. They were false Christians. Yes. So that's how we read that. So what what verses did you say for next week? Acts 4, 32 to 5, 11. Okay, somebody got a prayer to send us home with. I can do that. Okay. Dear God, we just we just praise you and thank you for sending the Holy Spirit into our lives tonight as we struggle together to understand how sovereign you are, to understand which things that seem not understandable to us, but we also proclaim you are sovereign. The Bible tells us so. Your word puts that right in front of us. And we need to gain our confidence from your word and not from what other people are saying. You give us an opportunity to reach out to those people who are doing that work in the new people groups that have not heard your word. And this is probably one of the most important things that we could possibly do to help them to proclaim your word to new people. So we ask that you guide and direct us in our thoughts and our actions that we may and our prayers especially, that we pray for the people that are doing this work and that 
if we possibly can, that we support it in some way so they have more Bibles and more strength and more support in the work that they're doing. You are almighty. You are loving. You are sovereign. You care for your people. You reach out to the ones that haven't heard yet that you are still your sheep and that need to be drawn in. So we thank you for including us in that important ministry that you put before us. And we are humble and thankful in front of you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Can I just put your names on a card? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. You go ahead and send what you're going to send. And this, Becky won't get this till she comes back, probably. I probably, unless I send it to Kelly's house, but uh, we'll see. Well, welcome. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, life is different. Okay. I think you Good guess. night, Mike. Bye. I think yes. God, if no God, his sovereignty will be kill each other a long, long time ago. That's true. It's true. Only one reason. That's yeah. No, about the woman said uh, that, no about reason we killed each other. Yeah. yeah. A long time ago. Left maybe Noya to to uh, several sons. Again. You guys have a good week. Sleep well. Too. Don't sleep. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.